Welcome back friends. In today's session, we are going to discuss about positive inductive effect. This is the continuation of our topic of organic chemistry. If you remember in the previous session, we discussed about the negative inductive effect and how we tend to affect the reactivity of different compounds. Now we touch two major things about the effect of negative inductive effect in increasing the acidic strength of carboxylic acid. Also we discuss about the effect of negative inductive effect in uh, reactivity of acidic beta and uh, acidic alpha hydrogen. And we gave one example in alkyl halide and we saw how it tend to affect the reactivity of alkyl halide in different reaction condition. Now, today we are going to continue with our topic of organic chemistry and today we are going to discuss about the positive inductive effect. Now, before going into notes, if we remember when we discuss about the negative inductive effect and the general concept about the inductive effect, we said that inductive effect is an electronic effect due to electron donation or electron withdrawal. And as we said in the negative inductive effect, that it is because of the withdrawal of electrons from the organic compound or from a certain functional group. And by withdrawing electron, we are affecting the reactivity of that organic compound. Now today we are going to continue. And in today's session we are saying that uh, the positive inductive effect is due to donation of electrons. Now if you remember we said a group of atom or an atom which withdraw electron from organic compound, it must be more electronegative. Now, in other words, in a positive inductive effect, we need a group of atom or an atom which is less electronegative to donate electron to carbon. Now, remember, many of the atoms which are less, which are less electronegative as compared to carbon, they are metallic ones. And it is very rare to see metallic compounds in, I mean, it is very rare to see metallic atoms in organic in organic compounds. That's why most of the time it is not normally to see positive inductive effect in the organic compound or it is rare to see positive inductive effect in the organic compounds as compared with negative inductive effect. Now let's go to the notes. As I said if you need these notes you can just contact me. I know most of you know my numbers so you can just contact me and then by contacting me I can give you the way of uh, just getting these notes, but I hope soon they will be in the application. You can go to Play Store and you can download the app Dr. Miller Lectures and then you can get the notes there. You can just pay and then get the notes. So we are saying that in positive inductive effect in the polarization of the sigma bond, in the polarization of the sigma bond due to electron donating effect of the adjacent atom or group of atom. So we are paralyzing a sigma bond due to electron donating effect. This is the vice versa of the negative inductive effect which is due to electron withdrawal effect. In other words, we are saying that positive inductive effect is an electronic effect which arises in a compound as the result of electron being released to either carbon or function group and it results into sigma bond polarization sigma bond polarization. So generally positive inductive effect is due to donation of electrons. We are donating electrons to the uh, functional group or to the organic compound and by donating the electrons we are getting positive inductive effect. Now we are saying that in a group of atom or atom which releases electrons to the carbon or functional group is said to cause positive inductive effect. However, in organic compounds there are few groups or atoms which exist positive inductive effect. Now, listen the reason behind why there are few atoms which tend to donate electrons to organic compounds. We are saying that this is because atoms which are less electronegative, atoms which are less electronegative than carbon and which would release electrons to the carbon by positive inductive effect are all metallic atoms. So all of the atoms which could release electrons to carbon, they are metallic. And it is very rare to see metallic atoms in the organic compounds. 
So then, there are very few organic compounds which comprise metallic atoms. The only group of atoms which is considered to cause positive inductive effect in organic compound is alkyl group. The alkyl group. So, uh, if you understood well your own level of organic chemistry, an uh, alkyl, alkyl group is normally represented by R. And the functional, the, the, the general formula of alkyl group which is Cn, then H2n plus 1. So, I know most of you, if you understood your all level organic chemistry, it is very easy to understand this concept of alkyl group. An alkyl group um, is just like a derivative of alkali, but it, it is the primitive form one hydrogen. In alkali, we know the general formula. It is Cn, H2n plus 2. This is the general formula for alkali. alkali. Now, normally when we are drawing the structure of alkali, let's say uh, we are taking an alkali having three carbons, so it will be C, and then three. Counting the number of hydrogen will be H, two N, then it is two times three, six plus two is equal to eight. So it will be H, eight. That is an alkali propane, call it propane because it has three carbons, as you know from your organic chemistry of all level. The nomenclature of organic compound. This is propane. Now, from propane, we are getting an alkyl group which will be called as propyl. So, this is propane because it is an alkyl. It contains the suffix an. But in a, from alkyl, from propane, we are getting the alkyl group which is C3, then H7, which will be called as the propyl. Propyl. Because it is an alkyl group, then it will have the suffix YL. So I know uh, most of you you understand about the alkyl group, but some of you don't understand about the alkyl group. Now the alkyl group, if we are drawing the open structural formula of this one and this one, the open structural formula to see how the carbon and the hydrogen they arrange it in these two compounds. Now starting with this propane, the open structural formula of propane we see then uh, C, then C, then C, then you will have hydrogens, eight hydrogens. So you have hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So this is the open structural formula of, of propane having the three carbons and the eight hydrogens. Now when we are coming to propyl, which have YL or an alkyl group, this will be deprived of one hydrogen, having only seven hydrogen. So it will have C3 and then H7. Now, what you can see here, or what you can observe is that this bond, it doesn't bond anywhere. It is the bond of, of carbon, but it doesn't bond anywhere. So this group, this group, tend to cause positive inductive effect by donating electrons. So in other words, you can say that it, the electrons, they are just coming from uh, these, uh, these atoms. Then by coming from these atoms, then they will be donated. The positive inductive effect will be transferred, will be transferred towards this carbon, will be transferred to, towards this carbon. Now, because this effect comes from other atoms and then goes to this carbon, which will go to bond in a certain chain or in a certain organic compound because this is an alkyl group. An alkyl group is just an attached group which goes to attach in a certain organic compound. So let's say here we have a carboxylic acid. Eh? We have a carboxylic, carboxylic, carboxylic acid. Eh? We have a carboxylic acid. Or even not a carboxylic acid, even a, a, a carboxylic group. So let's say here we have, uh, let's say here we have C, eh, C double bond O, then a hydroxyl, just a carboxylic group. Now, what you can see is that the carboxylic group here will be, there will be an alkyl group which tend to donate electrons to the carboxylic group. We tend to donate electrons to the carboxylic group. Now, what you can see is that uh, this effect comes from other atoms and then goes to this carbon. So as far as the number 
of carbon atoms tend to increase. Or in other words, as far as the, the size of an alkyl group, the number of carbons in an alkyl group tend to increase. Also, the positive inductive effect or the extent of this group to cause positive inductive effect will be increased. The extent of this alkyl group to cause positive inductive effect will be increased. So the strength or the extent of a positive inductive effect will depend on the size of an alkyl group. We depend on the size of an alkyl group. So most alcohol, most alcohol group release electrons towards the functional group. This is not alcohol. In the notes it is written as alcohol, but it is not alcohol. It means most alkyl groups. Most alkyl groups release electrons towards functional group. Electrons releasing a bit of alkyl group increases as alkyl group gets bigger. Gets bigger. Gets bigger. In the notes it is written better. There are some of the mistakes in the notes. As you know, we are human beings. And this is not uh, written just by, by human hands. So we'll just correct them when we'll be typing. But now, just to let these mistakes. So if the alkyl group gets bigger, then the effect or the strength of the positive inductive effect tend to increase. So as I have explained here, that when the number of carbon atoms in the alkyl group tend to increase, also the effect or the positive inductive effect tend to increase. Now, for example, if we are taking a uh, propyl, uh, propyl, which we draw here as an example, the propyl group will have a less positive inductive effect as compared to the uh, butyl group. Butyl group having four carbons. So the number of carbons determine, number of carbons determine uh, the strength or the extent of the positive inductive effect, which will be caused uh, by that group, which will be caused by that group. So now let's see some of the examples. Some of the examples. For example, if we have a CH3, eh, CH3, then we have a CH2. This is just an example. Eh, releases more electron than CH2. This one releases more electrons, electrons than electrons than CH3. All of these, they are alkyl group. This one is a, an ethyl, but this one is the methyl group. But because this one contains two carbon, while this one contains only one carbon, this one will be strong or will cause post, uh, strong positive inductive effect as compared to, the, to another group there. But if we are going again, CH3, then CH2, then CH2, this will release more electrons, will release more electrons than uh, CH3, CH2 will release more electrons than that group. So the strength of the positive inductive effect will just be uh, going like that way, going like that way. So what happens here is that uh, we have carbon, then carbon, then carbon, they say, then we have hydrogens, eh? having a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, then hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen. So what happens is that uh, this hydrogen will become partially positive, eh? partial positive charity, partial positive, and this one partial positive, eh? partial positive, partial positive, partial positive, and this one partial positive. The hydrogen will, be, will become partial positive, and by becoming partial positive, that means the electrons will be attracted towards the carbon atoms. Electrons will be attracted towards the eh, carbon atoms, and by being attracted towards carbon atoms. All of these electrons will be transmitted through the sigma bonds and by being transmitted through the sigma bond, then finally they will cause positive inductive effect. They will cause positive inductive effect. Uh, it is initial is just I then a positive sign. I then a positive sign. So this is how an alkyl group tends to cause positive inductive effect. An alkyl group tends to cause the positive inductive effect. Now let's extend our discussion to discuss how the positive inductive effect tend to influence the reactivity of different groups of, of organic compounds tend to influence the reactivity of different groups of organic compounds the first thing about the positive inductive effect positive inductive effect decreases acidic strength of carboxylic acid now if you remember in the negative inductive effect 
we discussed with the carboxylic acid and i know that if we are together in the negative inductive effect it will be very easy for you to understand me in this part of our positive in this part of our positive inductive effect now in the negative inductive effect we say if we have we have a ch3 then you have ch2 then you have c o o h uh, this is the uh, this is the carboxylic acid having three carbons now the strength of this acid is not equal to the strength of ch3 then ch having chlorine here then cooh the reason behind we explain in the negative inductive effect and i don't want to to repeat so because i know some of, of you you just viewed the session of negative inductive effect but we said that it, it is because of the negative inductive effect caused by this chlorine and how this negative inductive effect tend to affect the acidic strength we say it is because the ch3 group then ch having chlorine here here we'll have c double bond o then it will be o then hydrogen now the strength of carboxylic acid depends on the concentration of hydrogen ions which are released into solution forming the protons the protons how many protons will be released into solution and how many of them they will exist in the free ions and then you will measure the pka according to the concept of acid bases and salt now i don't want to explain the concept of a pka or the concept of a ph because uh, they are discussed in the acid base and salt but if the number of hydrogen ions tend to increase we know that the ph tend to decrease so the strength of this carboxylic acid will be measured by looking at the number of hydrogen ions which exist in the free ions in the solutions or which exist in the protons how many hydrogen there exist as protons in the solution now taking an example of this carboxylic acid then we'll have this chlorine then we'll have a bond here carbon oxygen then oxygen I, I, oxygen hydrogen bond now the strength of carboxylic acid as i said depends on the association of hydrogen so as far as this bond oxygen hydrogen bonds become stronger that means the strength of carboxylic acid will decrease why because when it becomes stronger the energy required to break this bond will be higher and because the energy required to break that bond will be higher that means the release of hydrogen ions will be difficult on the other side when this bond becomes weaker that means the strength of carboxylic acid will tend to increase we tend to increase if this bond becomes weaker because the energy required to break that bond will be lower and by being lower then it will be broken easier and then at the end of the day will end up with many hydrogen ions in the solution so the negative inductive effect caused by this chlorine tend to be transmitted through the sigma bond and then by withdrawing electrons from the oxygen hydrogen bond the negative inductive effect directly goes to cause the effect or go to affect this bond and by affecting this bond makes this bond to be weaker makes this bond to be weaker simply by withdrawing of the electrons caused by the more electronegative atom which is chlorine now in absence of this chlorine that means we'll be having the group which is an alkyl which is an alkyl ether like this one and in absence of this chlorine in absence of this chlorine that means there will be no negative inductive effect so what will happen there will be a positive inductive effect there will be a positive inductive effect and by this positive inductive effect caused by the alkyl group caused by the alkyl group let me just uh, simply show you what happens here but um, here there will be uh, ch3 then ch2 this group tend to cause positive inductive effect then by causing positive inductive effect this will make this bond to become stronger because more electrons they are added to that bond and by adding the electrons the bond will become stronger that's the uh, first influence of the positive inductive effect if you understood it in the negative inductive effect it is just like a, a repetition so we are saying that in alkyl groups releases electrons to the carboxylic group alkyl group so regardless of the size of the alkyl group will have R then 
this R group tend to release electrons to the C double bond or hydroxyl. This the carboxylic group. Then the alkyl group tend to release electrons to the carboxylic carboxylic group. So electron released to the carboxylic group, electrons released to the carboxylic group by the alkyl group increases electron density throughout the carboxylic group. This causes the electron density of oxygen hydrogen bond to increase. So the electron density at this region will increase. And by increasing the electron density, then what we are saying is that this bond will become stronger. This bond will become stronger. The bond will become stronger due to the presence of electrons. So we are saying that increasing in the electron leads up to the strong thickening of the oxygen hydrogen bond which make it difficult to break readily in aqua solution. This decreases acidic strength of carboxylic acid. So since the electron density tends to increase here due to positive inductive effect, then the bond becomes strong. The bond becomes strong and acidic strength tends to decrease. So what we are saying that in the aqua solution, the acid dissociates less readily and that equilibrium lies more backward. The equilibrium lies more backward. So the equilibrium which we are talking here is the equilibrium of the dissociation of this compound uh, which we can simply present here. Uh, the equilibrium tends to lie more backward and when, when we are calculating pKa for this acid tend to decrease. So we will have R then uh, C double and O then OH. So the equilibrium is in the aqua solution, the equilibrium will be in the presence of water here. So if we are adding water, if we are adding water, we will get R, C double bond, O, then O have a negative here, plus H3O, hydroxonium ion, hydroxonium ion. So this equilibrium will lie more backward. This hydroxonium ion is the one which is regarded in the proton. In this, uh, in this context, we are just regarding this hydroxonium ion in the proton. So the, the, the extent of the, or the number or concentration of hydroxonium ion is what is regarded as the number of proton in the solution. The number of proton in the solution. And by calculating the, the pKa of this acid, uh, will change. The pKa will, will change. So, for example, we are given a question here. As I told you that uh, most of these questions, they require your understanding. Most of the questions in this part, they require your understanding. They just uh, need you to, they just not need you to explain because some of them they need you to explain, but some of them, most of them, they, they, they need you just to know uh, how to answer the question or just to know how to present the concept. Now, for example, we have, a, we have compounds here. And let me just uh, write these compounds quick. Uh, for this question A, we have a CH3, then COOH. B, we have a compound A. B, we have a H, COOH. C, we have a CH3, CH2, COOH. Then D we have a D we have a C three then e three three C C O O H and then E we have a C H two chlorine C O O H and F we have a F we have we have C H Three, then CH, chlorine two, COOH. Now we are given these compounds, and uh, you are asking the question is arrange the following compounds in order of increasing, in order of increasing acidic strength, in order of increasing acidic strength. That means you you are required to start with the, the less acidic compound to the more acidic compound the less acidic to the more acidic compound. You are required to arrange these compounds. Now, remember, 
Uh, remember that we said the strength of facility is decreased by the strength of facility is decreased by the alkyl group. As the alkyl group becomes bigger, the compound becomes less acidic. And as the alkyl groups becomes smaller, the 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 compound becomes more acidic. Now, among all of these compounds, this one, the one which is less acidic. Why? It is because it contains three. Three, uh, if we, we expand this, it will be written as uh, C, then CH3, then CH3, then CH3, then C or O, H. So I hope you can observe this. This one donates electron, this donates electron, this donates electrons. Then all of these they go to cause the positive negative effect at this bond. So D will be less electronegative than from D, then we are moving to C. Why C? It's because it contains two carbons in its alkyl group, C. This is less than from C we have a. Why A? Because it contains the difference between C and E is that this one, the difference between A and E is that this one doesn't contain chlorine, but this one contains chlorine. So the presence of chlorine causes negative inductive effect. And by causing the negative inductive effect, tend to increase the acidic strength. So from here, from C, we will have A. From A, we will have a from A we will have B. From B we will have E. E because this one causes negative inductive effect. E. And then from E we will have F. Why F? Because F contains two chlorines. Having two chlorines will cause more negative inductive effect as compared to as compared to other groups of other groups of uh, organic compounds. So this question, it doesn't need you to cram. It doesn't need to. So, so come No, it's just, it just need the reasoning. How do you reason? How do you reason? Why? Yani mwari ma kuliza kwenye tia ni kwamba abona ni mwari ni mekoseli swali ni mekoseli swali ni ambia ni arrange compounds. Anaenda pana kwambia he? Why? Kwa ni ureka ni mwazoni. So na wangana kuji ngata ngata. Ah ah. You give him or her reason. Kwamba ni it is because ni ina alkyl group kubwa so having the big alkyl group then by having big alkyl group that means it will cause strong positive inductive effect and you know positive inductive effect decreases the acidic strength of carboxylic acid then why F is more acid it is because it contains two chlorines and we know chlorines they, they cause negative inductive effect and from the concept of negative inductive effect chlorines they tend to or negative inductive effect tend to increase the acidic strength of Carboxylic acid. Kwa hiyo, maswari kama haya, they are many of them, many of them, and uh, simply they require just a very small ability, a very small ability. This is the basic stuff of organic chemistry, how to get pick up when you combat bad and quaker conditions in body body. So, yeah, this is the basic school in our Tokyo to wherever, wherever you do. Kwa maswari kama haya, ya kuweza kufanya je kuweza ku arrange yanakuwa mengi kama namna hiyo hapo kwenye notes utakuta mengi sana kama namna hiyo hapo utakuta mengi sana kwa namna hiyo hapo na niende kwenye effect ya pili now the second effect tunasema positive inductive effect increase basic strength of amines increase basic strength of amines increase increase basic Basic strength of um, amines. Now, the amines they are written as R, then N, H2, and this nitrogen having one lone pair. Now, the, the basic or the basicity or basic strength of amine depends on its ability to, re to release this lone pair. Depends on its ability to release lone pair. So, if we have a positive inductive effect, that means 
the electron density at nitrogen will be increased. And by increasing the electron density at nitrogen, that means we are increasing the probability or the chances the, these lone pairs they become more legally. Yani kama vile, we unahela. Unahela F10. Na tutakwe samkuwa ni tajiri kama hile F10 utaigawa. Sasa, if someone ame kuongezea hela nyingine, anaongeza wewe kutoa hile F10 yako kiraisi. Yani toka mwanzo likonoeza kuigawa. Hile ulipo ungeze wewe F10 nyingine. Hile hila ya kwa kono na Kumbe naweza ni katoa watu, sini megawewa nyingine. So, electrons in the nitrogen, they can be released. And by releasing the electrons, the amines, they, they are based in nature. But when they are given other electrons, then their basic strength tend to increase. Their basic strength increase. So we are saying that amines are the strongest base among organic compounds. Basic strength of amine depends on the reactivity of the lone pair present in nitrogen atoms. So amine can be associated with the hydrogen proton by using its lone pair present on nitrogen atom. They can associate with the hydrogen atoms. So any group which may release electrons into amine group, like alkyl group, will increase the reactivity of lone pair will increase the reactivity of lone pair, will increase the ability of lone pair to be released, or the ability of lone pair to involve in different reactions. So electron released into a minor group by alkyl group tend to repel the lone pair away from nitrogen and accelerate it to move towards the hydrogen proton. So what is done here is because the electron released by alkyl group Repel the lone pair. As we know, the like charge tend to repel. So the electrons released from alkyl group repel the lone pair and thus increase its reactivity. So we are saying that um, on the other hand, any group which withdraw electrons away from a minor group by negative inductive effect lowers the reactivity and availability of the lone pair for association with hydrogen proton. This is because removal of electrons from nitrogen makes it partially positive charged. So if we remove electrons from nitrogen, we make the nitrogen partially positive charged. Let's say in the presence of an atom in this uh, group, if we have an atom which withdraw electrons, and if we have a, uh, an atom which withdraw electrons by negative inductive effect, tend to decrease the acidic strength of um, amine. Why? Because by withdrawing electrons, you are making nitrogen a slightly positive. And if it is slightly positive, that means it will hold the electrons for itself. Utamfanya nitrogen, aindele kwa mchoyo wa electrons, mchoyo electrons. So, from there we are saying that uh, this is because removal of electrons from nitrogen makes it partial positive charge. This in turn makes it the lone pair to become strongly held by partially positive charge created on, on nitrogen. This effect reduces a variability of lone pair and hence basic strength of amine decreases. So, yeah. Again, we have questions in this part and uh, all of these questions, they, they simply need your understanding. For example, you are given, um, yeah, you are given, for example, in this question you are given, just uh, a few examples, most of them you see them uh, in the notes, you are given, Arrange the following compounds in order of increasing basic strength. Uh, compound A, CH3, NH2. Then compound B, CH3, uh, then chlorine, NH2. Uh, yeah, it's not CH3, it will be CH2. So that this chlorine will attach it. So C will be CH3. C3, CH2, NH2, and D will be NH3, then E will be CH3, uh, CH2N. Mm. NH, CH3. From there, F, 
if we have a CH2, then F MH2. Uh, even just example. Na kutoka hapo unaweza kuona haihitaji kukalini, narudia tena haihitaji kukalini. From there unaanza which one may contain alkyl group kubwa? Ni hapa. Lakini huyo hapa unamuona tukimdraw hiyo E, hii ana anaonekana japo. Hii anaonekana CH2, CH3, CH2. Hapa kuna nitrogen, hapo kuna hydrogen. Hapo kuna ngapi? Kuna CH3. Na tukimdraw F a huyo F huyo F huyo F ni CH2 hapa na fluorine. Akisha kuna fluorine hapa kuna NH2 huyo F F1 lote. F1. Sasa F F1 lote. Tunamponsida kwanza si. Si ndio mbaba hapo katika. The most basic ni si. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu si ana group huyo hapa. Possible not possible not. So we now go to accumulate uh, in order of increasing uh, in order of increasing. So in order of increasing the answer na smallest send to kama na nini. Una answer smallest in order of increasing. So in order of increasing tuna answer na huyo hapa. Fluorine is small to negative and it will cause negative inductive effect. And the effect of chlorine will be higher even compared to that of chlorine. So that's why the less acidic is F, from there will have B, from there will have as a uyu na uyu ana electronegative. Uyu ana chochotu. Uyu nani? Amoni ana chochotu. So naenda kwenye D. From there, tutuwa kwenye D, maraka tafata nani? Yule ambaya meanza, uyu wapa, ana, ana aluka ili wapa. A. Tukutuwa kwenye A tunapata nani? Ana alka yudoka anayipata ni C hapa. Tukutuwa kwenye C anayipata nani? Anayipata ni mwisho. E yule pale. This is the order of increasing the basic strength. And you have the reasoning. Yani so naenda tu. You have reasoning. Why? Kwa nini? You must have a reasoning. Kama una reasoning unakua naenda. Unaenda kipofu kipofu. Kwa science we are going with it, eh, with reason. So this is how you should arrange the, the, the compounds. You should arrange the, the compounds. From there, mm, unazo kapea maswari maybe even in comparison of two compounds. Because this is the uh, arrangement of many compounds. But you can give a comparison of two compounds. Comparison of two compounds. And then you can be asking that which one is more basic. Which one is more basic. However, sometimes these compounds, they look similar. So if they look similar, don't get confused. For example, uh, you are given maybe you are given CH3, you are given CH3, then CH2, CH2, NH2. Then another compound, you are given CH3, then NH, N, then CH3, CH3. Are you looking at these compounds? Then after having this compound, you are asking which one is the strongest than the other? Is this one or this one? Now, looking at these compounds, you can see these are three methyl groups, but this one has three carbons also in the alkyl group, which make it the propyl group. Now you can you can just scratch in your head that, that which one, which one, which one, which one. Now the one which will be the strongest base is this one compared to this one. Why? It's because of the extent of donation of electrons. This one has three methyl group joined or connected directly to nitrogen. And because they are connected directly, that means they will make electrons directly to nitrogen, making the lone pair of nitrogen more reactive as compared to this one. Because this one has three carbons. But the three carbons, only one carbon is joined to nitrogen. So the extent of donation of electrons to nitrogen will be lower as compared to this compound. So the, this compound is called as a, is called as ethylamine. This is called as 
ethyl amine and this one is trimethyl amine so the, 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 the reason behind we are saying that the trimethyl amine which is this one trimethyl amine is more basic compared to ethyl amine because listen this reason because the nitrogen atom having lone pair is directly bonded is directly bonded to the carbon atoms which donate the electrons and makes the lone pair available and reactive makes the lone pair available and reactive so the, the reason behind is because of the directly bonding of the nitrogen which contain lone pair directly bonding of the nitrogen which contain lone pair and we have our different categories of uh, questions in this part comparing the, the basic strength or asking the comparison of the basic strengths or arranging arranging or comparing the basic strength for example if you remember we talked about uh, we talked about the alkyl group and ali ali and ali group uh, and ali group is the one which contain benzene like this one. and if you remember we discussed about the ability of this group to cause negative inductive effect the ability of this group to cause negative inductive effect that means if this group will be attached to an amine to an amine it will withdraw electrons from the amine group it will withdraw electrons and sometimes if you are getting the questions which involve the arrangement of compounds and one among them is the one which contain ion group don't wonder because you know the effect of that one is to decrease is to decrease the to decrease the base strength why it is because of the negative inductive effect moving to the effect number 3 negative i mean positive inductive effect increases stability of carbonium ions increases stability of carbonium ions now we are saying that in the stability of carbonium ions increases with increase in, num in the number of alkyl groups due to the positive inductive effect the alkyl groups release electrons to carbonium bearing positive charge and thus stabilizes the ion stabilizes the ion now when we are talking of the carbonium ion in different reaction it can involve this now the carbonium ion is written as a let's say it is ch3 positive this is just a, an example so any any alkyl group having positive charge can be regarded as the carbonium ion now if we have a carbonium ion let's say attached to three alkyl group r c r r this one eh, will be more stronger will be more stronger as compared to the one which is attached to two alkyl groups so r carbon r then h this one this also will be more stronger as compared to r then c hydrogen now when we are talking about the strength of this carbonium ion eh, this is the series of decreasing decreasing strength of carbonium so when we are talking about the stability of this carbonium ions we are just looking at the donation of electrons by this alkyl group now if we are donating electrons to carbon by donating the electrons to carbon then what will happen is that this positive charge will be slightly neutralized and by being slightly neutralized it becomes more stable becomes more stable now we have the three classes of carbonium ions the primary the secondary and the tertiary the primary one they are the one which are attached to only one carbon atom this one can be regarded in the primary primary these are the secondary and these are the tertiary carbonium ions so the primary one they are the one which are attached to only single alkyl group 
Then these are the secondary, these are the tertiary. So in the arrangement, you can say the tertiary ones, they are stronger as compared to the secondary and the, the secondary and the tertiary one. And the effect number four is that in the positive inductive effect accounts for the formation of major product in electrophilic addition reaction of asymmetric alkene and alkynes. Now this is a very interesting effect of the positive inductive effect. Very interesting because, because of the way uh, we go to account for the major and minor products in, in these kinds of uh, organic reactions. Now what do we mean when we are talking of the major and minor products? If we are doing reactions involving alkene and alkyl, we generally have two products, the major one and the minor. When you are talking of the major, that means it is concentration in the solution. It is higher as compared with the minor one. So the minor product contains a uh, lower concentration as compared with the major one. How comes, for example, if you have a, you have a CH3, CH2, then CH, now we want CH2. Then look, in this side we have, we have three carbons, then in this side we have only one carbon. Now, as we know that in this side because of this group, which is alkyl group, we can just write as R, then CH, now on CH2. But in this side, we don't have any R. Or sometimes we can have CH3, CH2, then CH, now on CH, then CH2. All of these, they are called as asymmetric. Why? It is because the number of common in this side, they are not equal. So the carbons in this side, number of carbons, they are not equal to carbons in this side. This is what you call the asymmetric. And this asymmetric property can occur, can occur either in alkene or alkyl. Alkene or alkyl. So in this compound, let's say it could be alkyl, that means there could be no hydrogen in this carbon and no hydrogen in this carbon. And the bonds here could be three bonds. This is asymmetric alkyl. Now, positive inductive effect causes the appearance or the existence of the major and the minor products. Major and minor products. So, we are saying that, uh, for example, these are, these are examples of asymmetric. The symmetric one, the, the one, for example, if we have a CH2 down CH2. This one is symmetric because it contains the same number of carbon atoms in both sides of the bond. Or we have CH3, CH2, now on CH2, CH3. All of these, they are, this is not CH2, it is CH. All of these, they are symmetric because they contain the same number of carbon atoms. So symmetric alkene are those alkene compounds which have alkyl groups of equal size attached to the Carbons carrying the double one. So if we have a, we have a, let's say we have a, we have R and then carbon double bond. Here we have hydrogen, then here we have carbon, hydrogen, then R. And then let's say this one is R1. If R1 and R2 they are similar, that means this is symmetric. But if R1, R1 is not equal to R2. That means this is the acai, acai, acai metric, acai metric. Now, we are going to discuss about it as a metric and this uh, will be our concern. Will be our concern today, it's not uh, about symmetric ones because in symmetric there is no effect. But in asymmetric ones there is an effect. Now, we are saying that uh, asymmetric alkene are those alkene company that have alkyl groups of different sizes attached to the carbons carrying the double bond. 
And we have already we have already discussed about this. We have already discussed about this. Now we are saying that Alkene and Alkine undergo electrophilic addition reaction in which the electrophile adds first followed by addition of micro. Electrophilic addition reaction. Electro electrophilic addition reaction. Electrophile adds first followed by nucleophile. Electrophile adds first followed by nucleophile. Now, from there, we know an electrophile, an electrophile by property, it is electron depleted. It is depleted of electrons. So normally, it will follow the side where we have a higher concentration of electrons. So we are saying that uh, um, symmetric alkene undergo electrophilic addition reaction and give only one product. Symmetric one, they give only one product because there is a behind that if you have CH3 and let's say CH2, double bond CH2, then CH3, I mean here it is CHCH, then plus hydrogen bromide. If you have this compound, that means the if whether hydrogen will be attached here or here, anywhere, the product will be the same. And whether bromine is the attached here or here, the product is the same. Because the difference in product is the nomenclature. If we are naming the product and then the, the product of the same names, that means the product is one. But if we are naming the product and then the product they have different names, that means the products are different ones. So this is for the case of symmetric ones. But you are saying that in the reaction, in the reaction, Hydrogen proton is an electrophile. We attack first the double bond. We attack first the double bond. Site. Hydrogen will attack first the, the double bond. On attacking hydrogen proton, we attack to either carbon one or two. For example, the, the compounds, the, the, the hydrogen which bonded there in the double bond, we can uh, just regard them as one or two. Any one uh, of them or can be can be attacked by by hydrogen. So consider. Anyway, there is no need to to discuss more about this because the products they are the same. Now let's go to asymmetric alkene. Asymmetric alkene. Now let's say we have a CH three. Let's say we have CH three and then CH CH double CH two plus hydrogen bromine. If you have uh, this reaction, then you will have two products from this reaction. You will have two products. And one of them will cause, will correlate the media and another the minor. So we will have CH3, whether uh, the bromine can attach here or here. And if it attaches here or here, the product is different. So you may have CH3, then CH bromine. Then CH3, and then we may have CH3, CH2, CH2 bromine. Now, do you observe the difference? It is because here bromine is attached to carbon number two, here is to carbon number one. So, this will be called as one bromo, one bromo propane, and this one is two bromo propane, one bromo propane, and another one is two bromo propane. Now let's see which one is the major product and which one is the minor product and what is the effect of the positive inductive effect to lead to the formation of a major and minor product in this compound. Formation of major and minor products in this, in this compound. Now we are saying that of the two products, which one is the favored product or the major product? Of the two products, the two plume of propane, which is this one, is the major product. The two bromo propane is a favored product and is formed in high proportion and called it the major product. So the reason behind why it's called is major is because even the concentration of this product, concentration of that product in the solution, it is higher as compared to the concentration of another product, which is one bromo propane. So why two bromo propane is the major product? 
the reason behind it, Doctor, the reason behind it, Doctor, um, this is, uh, is, the, is the company which will form Kabukatea. Compound which will form Kabukatea. And as we know, we have uh, what you call it the stability of the Kabukatea. Stability of the Kabukatea, which is caused by the positive inductive effect. Positive inductive effect. Now remember, we said that uh, um, CH3, CH double. And here, hydrogen are dispersed. So, we have hydrogen here. And if you remember, we said in the reaction mechanism when we discussed about the types of organic reactions, we said that uh, this bond can break in two ways, either by this way or by this way. Now, having these two bond breaking rules, that means either the positive charge can be formed here or the positive charge can be formed here. Now, remember. The carbocation is stabilized by the alkyl group. So, by your reason, just by your reason, not by my reason, by your reason. Here we have carbon number one, and here we have carbon number two. Then, by your reason, which carbon will be good for the stabilization of the carbocation? Which carbon will be more stable if carbocation will be formed on that carbon? Now, if you understood the, the session, uh, when I started this session, I say the positive inductive effect tends to stabilize the carbocation. So, by that means, if these electrons will be passing through carbon number two, going to hydrogen, we will form a carbocation which is CH3, then CH positive. After that, positive, we we'll have CH3. Now, look at this carbocation. It has two alkyl groups attached to it, donating electrons by positive inductive effect, and thus it is stable, allowing bromine to come and donate electrons at this carbon. Now, this one will be the major product because the carbocation form will be stable as compared with the one in which the electrons will be passing to this carbon. So we we'll have CH3, then we we'll have CH2, then we we'll have CH2 positive charge. The strength of this carbocation and this one is different. As we say, I gave you an example how the two amines, all of them they have three carbons. I gave you an example here. I do remember I said if we have CH3, then CH2, CH2, NH2, then we have CH3, nitrogen, CH3. Then I asked you which one is strong. We say that this one will be strong. Why? It is because it has three alkyl groups attached directly to nitrogen, donating electron directly to nitrogen, causing the stronger positive inductive effect depending on the electrons. So even these two methyl groups, they will donate electrons directly to this carbon, stabilizing it more than what can be done by this ethyl group. So that's the reason behind to form this one in the major product. So this is explained in terms of stability of intermediate carbo carbonium ion, which is formed when the electrophile has just attached to the pi bond. So this one, the carbonium ion, let's say, let's call this as the carbonium ion number one because the electrons, the, the positive charge is here and this one is the carbonium, carbonium ion number two. So the carbonium ion number one is more stable as compared to the carbonium ion number two. Why? It's because of the, how the method they are arranging. So the carbonium ion which is resulted to the formation 
of 2 bromopropane is more stable than the carbonium ion that resulted to the formation of 1 bromopropane. Of the 2 carbonium ions, carbonium 1, carbonium 1, carbonium 1 is more stable than carbonium 2. The stability of carbonium ion increases by electrons donated to it by alkyl group through positive inductive effect. So, generally, apple utakuwa tu menileo, menileo na by that way, tunakuwa tuna different reactions ambazo tunazo kaurizwa. Which one is the major, which one is the minor product. Apple utakuwa tu utumie concept yako ya positive inductive effect na ujue which one will be the major and which one will be the minor product. So, yeah, we have a different uh, questions here but uh, they are just solid examples uh, we have different solid examples here so we will not be passing through them because we have already discussed them and uh, if you be passing through them and you get any challenge then uh, you can just uh, you can just uh, contact me so this marks the end of our our discussion let me just uh, solve some of the few questions here uh, some of the few questions my session is longer, but uh, let me just solve a few questions so that to emphasize your understanding because studying without questions, studying without questions is very difficult. So I know these questions they will help you. And uh, in the next session, we'll start with the the mesomeric effect the mesomeric effect this marks the end of our discussion with the inductive effect now uh, to turn up an example 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 once i complete the following reaction by writing major product by writing major product so no mind only major so for example you have a ch3 you then uh, CH double CH2. This is reacting with the water. Then, in the presence of acidic condition, to form CH3. Uh, okay, anyway, on my book, completed the following reactions by writing the, the major product. What is the unique one's reaction? Then we will. We we'll then explain the, the, the reactions CH3, then CH, now when CH2 plus NH3 in the acidic condition, in the acidic condition, then from there, number three, we have what CH3. You have C3, then you have C, C3, C hydrogen, C3 plus hydrogen bromide, the end product, and then number four to now C3 uh, to now CH. Double bond CH C three in number four now number five to now C three to CH double one C H two A number four plus I don't even call it number five plus uh, C three bromine of the number number six number six my little group. Then to a CH double bond C CH three C three 
house, water, then after there, sleep, 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 pass water in the facility condition. So, I have a solid to know, solid to approve. Now, we get an idea of home, I mean, there are. Like in the last one, the concept, to my So, I like once, to my to light only media product. So, I like once, remember, I'm not going to go in the mechanism. So, I'm going mechanism of to my dinner, to my water. When you quality water, you quality, you know, you know. Last time I told you, I'm saying you're seeing condition for some Who knows what you mean? Nucleophile. And remember to say, ma, there is no reaction to, to nucleophile in the absence of acidic condition. Who knows what you mean? Nucleophile. You're not a brick bond, you're a nucleophile, you're up on a unload pair. So all of these, they are nucleophile. So we must add the hydrogen atom. The other hydrogen atom is called CH3A, then CH. Now CH. Plus, now to the last ability of the Kabukatia. In the Kabukatia, if you put up again the body, that means the Kabukatia form will be CH3. Then from there, we'll have C, CH3. Then here will be C, H. So the Kabukatia will be this one, and it will be more stable because of the donation of the electrons by the positive inductive. Effect. It also has a polymerisha camera. That means you want to put your bond up, your bond up, it will be at the end of the day, hydrogen will be able to attach up. After that, it will be able to give hydrogen will be able to attach up. How? Okay, we have a mechanism. We have to make fun of you. We have to see your pick up here to see if I have a view. We have to make a pick up to make a pick up. We will see it really. Then C hydrogen CH3 positive pile. It add in water, add in water, water and oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen in a two lone pair. This lone pair of donated pile. So we we'll end up with the donated lone pair of the pata, the donated lone pair of the pata, CH3. Tapata C double O and I mean single bond. Sorry, so O hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Apo kuna loni pair. Pare kuna positive charge. Pare kuna CH three. Pare kuna hydrogen. So to put a compound here, apo. Now if you remember the principles of showing reaction mechanism, a compound figure when you step three, the pair to be one here. Now CH3, then C oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen positive charge, lone pair, hydrogen, C3. So when you step three here for manake, it will take to big bond. It's a big bond, it's a supply pile, the magnesia, the magnesia CH3, C hydroxyl. Then you have hydrogen C3 plus here hydrogen do acidic condition here to to go to the anzanal reaction. That is the the first reaction. Even if you want first reaction in a quiet initial, first reaction a quiet initial. From there, let's kind of in a second reaction or major product chapter. Major product chapo in a pony, major product chapo in a pony, CH3, CH, I drop the CH3. Hi, second reaction. Again, reason you need a, what's the second reaction? No one had you feel people. Where are you? Anywhere are you? In the very, very two. Who you are, man, I can't see my pants and it's quite true. So I can't get a pair of it's quite. We are the kujia at Tampa. I can supply pair. We shall see the pair of product here. So the C H three, C H, N H two, then C three. If 
final product here. We shall see the product from each one. From there, can you use a panini and H2 for some gun? Up I don't even need a bunjika. I'm going to mention the mechanism bar. Like it took out the reaction here, and by the reaction, we are going to the alkyl to the alkyl. So again, how to kilonet electrons huku we are about to become positive at a cost stronger. So bromine, bromine we attach here. Bromine we attach here. We are about to get a touch in the hand hydrogen. Your reaction is in a city condition. Here, here is a symmetric potassium like an eye. Here, bromine is attached to a Marake C3, um, we reaction in Lazima pa C3 to put your cottage up, C3 to put your cottage up, now bromine to put your cottage when you come on the pillar. Here is an example too. Like in the reaction here, we put an alkyl group in it. So this one will be stable. Uh, I don't see it be attached here in this carbon number two. So, we also call it to hydroxy to attach up, bromine to attach up with carbon yopo. We took a my work on our atomic connection up by not see. So, come on in a Caribbean, it is mechanism, meaning we took a bona on a corner viona. We took a bona corner viona. Corners of corner confano, a confano is swally, iri, iri. We also call it, Yanni, you don't cram, but then a covina, then a real kind of nayop. Ajua inaweza kawa ni, ni, ni difficult kidogo ku, ku, kuona clear lakini I hope most of you you can just go to see these notes. So this marks the end of our session regarding the inductive effect. Kwenye session hafa tutaangalia mesovelic effect mesomeric effect. Nikutakia tu somaji mwema na eh, just review the session most of times ili uweze ku kuelewa vizuri organic chemistry na iwe na urafiki na wewe. Basi, sumaji mwema.